All right. Hey, how you doing, Rodney? Good morning. Welcome. All right. So I'm going to put my presentation screen up in a minute. But basically, this is uh, our last review. Uh, there were a few more items that I didn't cover last week. Uh, so this is going to be relatively brief. It's not going to be a whole hour's worth of content. So uh, hang on. Give me one second. I'll put up my screen. All right. The screen is showing. So the, the we're going to look at two more artists that you'll be responsible for knowing for the final exam. So the first two were Benny Andrews and Wangechi Mutu. And the next two will be uh, Carrie Mae Weems and Mark Bradford. Okay, so this is Carrie Mae Weems. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to read a few items from a biography that you all will be responsible for knowing. Okay. Uh, considered one of the most influential contemporary American artists, Carrie Mae Weems has investigated. Okay, this is the part we need to know. Family relationships, cultural identity, sexism, class, class, political systems, and the consequences of power. So that's uh, the first part of this passage that you will definitely have to know. And the question will be formulated somewhat, you know, which artist has investigated family relationships, cultural identity, sexism, class, blah, blah, blah. It'll be carried me weeks. Okay. Determined as ever to enter the picture, both literally and metaphorically, Weems has sustained an ongoing dialogue within contemporary discourse for over 30 years. So she's been a professional artist for over 30 years. That will be on the test. During this time, Carrie Mae Weems has developed a complex body of art employing photographs, text, fabric, audio, digital images, installation, and video. So that too is important, mostly for the photographs. That's the part that we're dealing with, but she also writes, she works with fiber, audio, digital images. She also does uh, holograms. So, but we are concerned about her photo for her photography. In the New York Times review of her retrospective, Holland Cotter wrote, Miss Weems is what she has always been a superb image maker and a moral force, focused and irrepressible. Weems has participated in numerous solo and group exhibitions at major national and international museums, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Frist Center for Visual Art, Solomon Guggenheim Museum in New York, and the Central Andaluz de Art Contemporaneo in Seville, Spain. Weems has received numerous awards, grants, and fellowships, including the prestigious Prix de Roma, the National Endowment of the Arts, the Alpert, the Anonymous Was a Woman, and the Tiffany Awards. In 2012, Weems was presented with one of the first U.S. Department of State's Medals of Arts in recognition of her commitment to the State Department's art and embassies program. And this is the important award. In 2013, Weems received the MacArthur Genius Grant, as well as the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's Lifetime Achievement Award. So that's very important in 2013. She's also received the BET Honors Visual Artist Award and the Lucy Award for Fine Art Photography. She was one of four artists honored at the Guggenheim's 2014 International Gala, a recipient of the ICB Spotlights Award from the International Center of Photography, the W.B. Du Bois Award from Harvard University, as well as honorary degrees from California College of the Arts, Colgate University, Baldwin College, the School of Visual Arts, and Syracuse University. All right. Uh, so this next passage is what you'll see on the test. She is represented in public and private collections around the world, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, Museum of Modern Art in New York, Museum of Contemporary Art, Los Angeles, and the Tate Modern. So any one of these uh, museums will be relevant to 
Miss Weems' story. Someone wants to join the call. Let me see. Admit. Hi, Jura. How are you? Okay, looks like I let her in. She didn't show up. Okay, let me get back to this. Okay, so this is a very important passage. Uh, any one of these museum destinations could be in the question. Uh, Weems has been represented by Jack Shane in gallery since 2008. Okay, so let's take a look at some of her bodies of work. So the body of work we're going to deal with is the uh, kitchen table series. And so you'll be expected to recognize any of these images as coming from the kitchen table series. All right, so uh, this is a series of single point perspective black and white photographs where she stages uh, basic home scenes. You know, the, but, but if you take a closer look at the photographic elements, these are masterfully rendered. I'm gonna enlarge these for you. All right, so this is the kitchen table series image number one. And this is the artist. And what you want to notice is the single point perspective of the table. And then we have the glowing orb oval shape of the lamp. And then we have a circular element. And then we have uh, inane artifacts. And then we have two figures. So each one of these deals with the same elements. We also have the edge of the door. And when we move along to the next piece, once again, we see uh, ephemera of cigarette smoke and card games. We also see a circular element on the table that's almost positioned directly beneath the oval of the lamp. And then we have some images on the wall and the part door. And so each one has the same thing happening. We have two figures. We have the single point perspective table. And the figures are always interacting with eye contact of some sort. And uh, so this, once again, is the artist. And you're also getting a glimpse of cultural understanding. OK, we have a bird cage right here. It, too, is contained in a ring. And we have the, you know, beverages and food products on the table. And so once again, two figures. This must, you know, if we have to assume this is the man of the house, this is the artist, she's the lady of the home. We have our circular glowing orb and we have our table effects. And this is about people living real life. You know, uh, one could look at this and say, you could project any sort of scenario onto this. You could project that he's looking in a paper for a job and she really needs him to have one. You could project that he's reading a political story and, and presenting it in a way that she doesn't agree with, but you get a sense that she's in a different space of mind that he is. And then once again, we see the same situation. She's, she's in the background observing him. See, we have, once again, two figures engaged in some sort of mental condition. And then she comforts him. But once again, two figures. Notice how the elements on the table move and shift each time. And this is the one where she's by herself. But in the foreground, we have a telephone. This telephone makes us think it has something to do with the male figure. And her despair, she has uh, her self-medication. And then we have more figures. They appear to be comforting her, comforting her. And the comforting continues. More drinks. Uh, you have to understand this was made in the 90s, so it was very common for people to smoke cigarettes indoors. <laughs> so I know uh, if most of you were very small when this came out. And in today's world, this would be very, very unusual. OK, then we have the three figures. Now they're amusing each other. 
but the the consistency of the table and the and the uh, overhead lamp. And so this is another uh, you know as a as a platform for sharing personal moments. Okay, this is the artist and she's getting her hair uh, groomed. And these are drinks. There appears to be a lot of drinking and smoking. And then it has another intimate moment of the artist with her daughter. Notice how the pitch and angle of the overhead light source has shifted. And so now she's learned, she's watching the mother or the mother's helping her learn. So we have all of these personal moments that she's capturing from her life and everything is based on this kitchen table. So this kitchen table is kind of like the heart of the home. And that's what she's trying to articulate with this body of work. So any one of these you will see, and, and this is the artist again, Carrie Mae Weems. This is her kitchen table. Now, as simple as this appears, Many people have uh, attempted to copy this without the same effect. So I'm not sure what she's doing here. I could only imagine. All right, righty, and something private. And then this is her again, having a private game of solitaire. And these are, this is a scale of the works and how they appear on display. It looks very different once they're installed. Has a haunting effect. So in the grouping, you can see the various uh, perspectives uh, of the glowing orb and, and how it creates its own point of view for the viewer. Okay. All right. So that was Carrie Mae Weems. Does anybody have any questions about that artist? So you will see two to three images from this series and you'll be expected to be able to identify either the, yeah, you'll be expected to identify the artist or the name of the series, which is the kitchen table series. Mm -hmm. From 1990. All right. So uh, does anybody have any questions? No, sir. Okay, great. We're going to move on to the next artist. This is Mark Bradford. Uh, Mark Bradford and I have been in several exhibitions together. Of course, he's really at the higher end of the food chain. Uh, right now, Mark Bradford is the uh, highest compensated living artist. Uh, his works auction off in the millions, and he works very large scale. And when you look at his work, this is an example of a piece, it appears to be paint, but these are all pieces of paper that have been stacked and layered. And uh, he takes an angle grinder and grinds away the top surfaces until he creates this very interesting and unique tapestry, which is uh, based on aerial views of cities. So this is like escape of Los Angeles, which is where he's from. All right, so Mark Bradford, born in 1961 from Los Angeles, lives and works in Los Angeles, is a contemporary artist best known for his large-scale abstract paintings created out of paper. So this statement will be on the test. Characterized by its layered formal material and conceptual complexity, Bradford's work explores social and political structures that objectify marginalized communities and the bodies of vulnerable populations. So that too will be on the test. Bradford's work explores social and political structures that objectify marginalized communities and the bodies of vulnerable populations. Just as essential to Bradford's work is a social engagement practice through which he reframes objectifying societal structures by bringing contemporary art and ideas into communities with limited access to museums and cultural institutions. Let me see. All 
Okay. Using everyday materials and tools from the aisles of the hardware store, Bradford has created a unique artistic language referred to frequently as social abstraction. That's important. Bradford's work is rooted in his understanding that all materials and techniques are embedded with meaning that precedes their artistic utility. That's an important statement you'll see on the test. You when talking about his work referred to frequently as social abstraction. His signature style developed out of his early experimentation with end papers, the small translucent tissue papers used in hair dressing. He has since experimented with other types of paper, including maps, billboards, movie posters, comic books, and merchant posters that advertise predatory services in economically distressed neighborhoods. Okay, so that statement there is potentially going to be on the test. He has since experimented with other types of paper, maps, billboards, movie posters. After gluing an image pre-selected for its historical significance onto canvas, Bradford outlines it with rope or caulk before fixing numerous layers of different types of paper. The artist then lacerates, erodes, and, evac and excavates the surfaces of his paintings using tools of civilization to reveal intersections between the layers of signifying materials, thereby, thereby transforming and expanding the medium of painting. This is another important section. Born in South Los Angeles, Bradford moved to LA's beachside Santa Monica neighborhood with his mother at age 11. Throughout his childhood, he worked in his mother's beauty salon in Lamert Park, where he first developed a curiosity and artistic and creative expression. After high school, Bradford spent his summers traveling in Europe. His experiences visiting museums and consuming art left an enduring impression. And for the first time at the age of 31, he began his formal arts education. Okay, here's the important part. Bradford re received his BFA from the California Institute of the Arts of, in Valencia in 1995 and his MFA from Cal Arts in 1997. Bradford received his first solo exhibition, Floss, at the San Francisco Art Institute's Walter and McBean Galleries in 1998 and his New York Museum debut in Freestyle at the Studio Museum in Harlem in 2001. In 2006, Bradford participated in the Whitney Biennial at the Whitney Museum of American Art, where he won the coveted Bucks Bomb Award, leading to his first major solo museum exhibition the following year at the Whitney. Okay, so this is very important. This will be on the test. Uh, the Whitney Biennial is a major uh, event to be a part of. It exposes you to an international audience and your price points go through the roof. Neither new nor correct. That was the name of the show. In 2008, in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, Bradford participated in Prospect One in New Orleans. This was the show that I was in with Mark. And in 2010, the Wexner Center of Arts presented a retrospective of his work that traveled for two to for two years to five institutions around the U.S. But this is important. In 2008, in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, he participated in Prospect One. All right, so last but not least, Bradford has exhibited to acclaim internationally and received numerous awards and honors, including his appointment to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2019, the U.S. Department of State's Medal of Arts in 2014. His appointment as a national Academ academician Academian, I'm sorry, <laughs> in 2013, and he too won a MacArthur Fellowship uh, Genius Award, J just like Carrie Mae Weems at Wangechi Mutu and Benny Andrews. Okay, so he got that in 2009. Uh, permanent installations of Bradford's work include What Hath God Wrought on the campus of the University of California, San Diego, and Bell Tower at the Tom Bradley International Terminal Departures Hall at Los Angeles International Airport. Okay, so 
those are the terms you need to know about Mark. So we'll take a look at uh, some selected images. Let me see. Okay, so this piece is entitled Cerebrus. Zoom in. So uh, the whole notion of Bradford's work is the up close surface experience uh, from a distance. It does very much appear like a painted surface, but this is all paper, all paper that's been stacked and layered and and uh, grinded through at various points. Okay, so that was Cerebrus. Okay, and this piece. This is an untitled work. And once again, it has a painter, painterly appearing surface, but there is literally no paint whatsoever. And we see the ropes and caulking medium that he uses to create a sense of drips. That's part of the illusion. And he's created this very interesting tapestry. I'll try to zoom in even more. Oh, I can't zoom in any further than this. And we have one more Mark Bradford piece to view. And by the way, Hauser and Worth is a blue chip art gallery. That's where everything is super expensive, hundreds of thousand dollars deep. Okay, now this piece is made from uh, end papers. Look how beautiful this is. This is the end papers that uh, are used in hair salons to, excuse me, uh, wrap up rollers. Look, this is such an incredible usage of this medium. And here's an example of a sign, you know, that he threw in the mix, one of the uh, billboards, he, he uh, extracts uh, signs and different paper-based media. Some of it has text and language on it, but this is a very incredible ex experiment using in papers. Okay, so we have one more. Actually, that's the. Uh, those are the last images, and those are the last artists that we're responsible for. So. Uh, does anybody have any questions? You basically, it's an overview of four artists. If you pay close attention to last week's lecture, I highlighted all the areas where the questions will come from as I did today, but you will be responsible for being able to recognize uh, the works of art that we discussed. So does anybody have any questions? I do. Um, yeah. So the test, is it gonna be on Canvas like the rest of them have been? Okay. Right. So yeah, you know, we're we're doing this uh social distancing thing. So we'll it it'll, it'll be offered on Canvas. Uh I oh, this is very important. I'm glad you brought that up. If you paid attention, I, I sent a I, I posted an announcement yesterday saying that the test will be on Wednesday the ninth. Actually, it's gonna be on Tuesday the tenth. Okay, so I'm gonna repost that. Uh as you know, with the asynchronous courses, uh, there's no set exam date that comes from the university. It's in the uh, hands of the faculty. So I'm going to send a correction. It's not on the 9th. It's on the 8th. OK, which is next Tuesday. OK. All righty. So are there any uh, questions or comments from anyone else? OK, if there are no questions or comments. That concludes this final presentation. Uh, I do recommend if you have old assignments that you're missing and then send in abundance, you really need to handle that because uh, Canvas has a default tally system. It's often filled with errors. So it tends to, by default, give everybody like a 98 point percentile. 
and it does that by default. So if that's what you've been using to gauge your progress, I would strongly advise that you don't do that, that you if you want to know where you're at, you add up all of your points possible and then you add up your grade and then from there you get a percentage. OK, but uh, if there are no questions, uh, I wish you all a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Thank you. You too. OK, I enjoy working with y'all. Listen, uh, you should really consider taking more art classes next semester. So we have a lot of offerings. Some of them have prerequisites. If uh, yeah, if, if you know, if you really want to take a course in an art catalog with a prerequisite, just send an email to me and I'll work to get you in that course. OK. OK, great. Thank you. All right. Y'all have a great holiday. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.